What do you do for a living? 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 I run a TikTok where I ask people what they do for a living in nice cars. YouTuber It's Daniel Mac asked over 100 millionaire supercar owners what they do for a living. What do you do for a living? You don't do anything? So naturally, I decided to watch all of his videos, all 118 of Bruh. them, and this is what I found. And in this video, we're gonna go over three main things. First of all, what percentage of people went to college? Did you go to college? What industry they work in? You know, I took my dad's trust fund into just a little bit of insider trading. <laughs> and what they do for a living. Hey man, I love your car. What do you do for a living? I'm the CFO of OnlyFans. All right, guys, this was a ton of work that I did for your enjoyment. So if you haven't done it already, make sure to gently tap the like button and hit subscribe. First of all, what industries were these supercar owners in? Well, by far the most common industry was technology at about 26.7%. And this is something that I've been talking about quite a bit on my channel. Tech has so many opportunities. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. One person who knows how to code can create an app that literally Literally millions of people can use. Usually in business, if you're just one person, there's no way you can scale the business to get to millions of people. However, there are a few skills, a few types of businesses out there where you can, and technology is one of them. And it really doesn't matter whether it's a skill, a degree, an industry, or a career. Technology is just good, and so I'm not surprised that this one was number one. Number two on the list was finance at 14%, and this one has everything to do with investing. Finance has always been a fantastic industry to be in. It's probably created the most billionaires out of any industry out there. Very similar to finance is number three on the list, which is real estate at about 11.6%. Real estate will always be a great way to build and grow your wealth. And so it's no surprise that there's an entire industry around it. Whether it's building real estate, renovation, buying and selling houses, investing, this is a booming industry that has created countless millionaires. Number four on the list was healthcare at 9.3%. And this is my industry because I'm a healthcare professional. And the cool thing about healthcare, in my opinion, is it's probably the most stable industry. Doesn't matter if it's the end of the world, there's still gonna be doctors and nurses taking care of people. They are truly essential and they'll be the last people to lose their jobs. Number five on the list was entertainment at 4.7%. And this is anything from having a social media following to being a professional actor. With the onset of social media, entertainment has become much more scalable and instead of having to be chosen by some, you know, big wig in Hollywood, you can just choose yourself. You make really entertaining or informative videos, post them on YouTube, and eventually with a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck, you'll probably blow up. This is an industry that's on the rise in my opinion, and one really great thing about this that you probably don't realize is that it's relatively recession-proof. When countries go into a recession, people end up spending a lot of time indoors and just consuming entertainment, and that means if you go into a recession, you'll likely make even more money if you're an entertainer. Tied for fifth place was automotive as well as aviation, both at 4.7% as well. And here's the entire list if you want to pause the video and just check it out. Next on the list, we're going to be talking about careers. And I actually think this is kind of genius for him to do this because from what I understand about him, he's the type of person who wants to be able to not only have a millionaire lifestyle, but he wants to be able to do it at a young age. Now, one thing I always talk about on this channel is if you're thinking about going into a career, for instance, the best thing you can possibly do is reach out to people who are already working in that career and ask them questions. And so he found a genius way of basically doing this. People who have supercars, generally speaking, are going to be young. And so they're millionaires, but they're young enough where they can actually enjoy their money. And so he asked a bunch of people who had supercars what they do for a living. And here's what he found. Because the truth is anybody, even if you have a relatively low paying job, can get rich over the long run if they consistently invest their money. And I've talked about this quite a bit on my channel. And the math here is stupidly simple. You can make a million dollars easily by investing $10 a day because of the magic of compound interest. But but the unfortunate thing is you'll likely be too old to enjoy it. And realistically speaking, most people want to be young enough to where they can actually enjoy their wealth. So here are the careers that will give you the best chance of getting rich quick, which means having a supercar under the age of 40. So by far the most common career was entrepreneur slash business owner at around 36.5%. When it comes to having enough money to be able to afford a supercar at a relatively young age, there's no question here that becoming an entrepreneur 
entrepreneur is going to be your best bet. Now, I will mention that a lot of the people who started these businesses were in some of these industries that I talked about before. So you could sort of put them in multiple categories. So we're talking about like finance, tech, entertainment, etc. But the second most common profession was actually a three-way tie at 6.8%. So most of the people who fell under this category were social media influencers. Tied for number two was tech. And this didn't include people who owned their own businesses. These were people who were employed. So they were employees in tech related jobs. So we're talking about software engineers, for instance. Also about 6.8% of the people said that they were rich because they had some kind of relationship with another wealthy person, whether this was inheriting money or maybe they were married to somebody. Now you might be surprised at how low this is, but research has shown over and over again that most people who become millionaires actually don't inherit their money. Depending on the study you look at, around 80 to 90% of millionaires are self-made. Doctor came in at number five at around 5.4%. Physician is obviously one of the highest paying professions, but it's also very difficult to become one and you're gonna be working long hours and it's just pretty challenging in general. Lawyers, finance professionals, and executives like CEO, CFO, et cetera, all came in tied at 4.1%. Now I do have to admit here that it was a little confusing sometimes to tell whether someone was the CEO of a business or whether they owned it. And yes, there is a difference there because business owners can hire CEOs to run their business. So whenever there was a question there, I just assumed that the person was the owner of the business. However, there were several cases where they were likely just a CEO. So chances are executive was actually higher than 4.1% and entrepreneur was likely a little bit lower. Also, I would like to say here that most of the people who were employees and they weren't business owners were likely in leadership or management positions. If you're a doctor, for instance, whether you like it or not, you are a leader because all of the other healthcare professionals are looking up to you. And a lot of the findings here are consistent with what I found when I did the video, The Careers That Create the Most Millionaires. In the top 1% of earners, you saw a lot of doctors, executives, managers, lawyers, finance specialists, marketing and salespeople. In the top 10%, you saw a lot of managers, software developers, marketing and sales experts, executives, finance specialists, and physicians again. And here's a quick look at the full graph in case you wanna pause the video and take a look. Now, the last question that Daniel would ask people is, did you go to college? And this was just a yes or no answer. Now, if you listen to your typical YouTube business guru who sells you a $1,997 course with a $10,000 mastermind upsell, they're gonna tell you that college is a scam and you should spend all of your money on their course instead. However, surprisingly, 75% of people said, yes, they did in fact go to college. And this is consistent with my findings as well, which I've gone over in detail on this channel. 80% of millionaires, 90% of billionaires and 95% of Fortune 500 CEOs have a college degree. So the myth that you should drop out of college if you want to be a millionaire is just that. A myth. But with that being said, I do somewhat agree with the fact that the value of a college degree, especially with how expensive it is, and especially with certain majors that aren't going to help you get a job, has gone down over time. And this is a topic I've gone over quite a bit on my channel, so check out my other videos. Getting a college degree is kind of a double-edged sword, and that's why it's extremely important that you plan things out and pick out the right degree for you. Another thing I want to mention here is every time I meet someone who is a successful business owner in the millionaire range, I like to pick their brain and ask them questions, kind of like Daniel does. And I can tell you that by far the most common story for people who ended up becoming millionaires is they got a normal job, they learned a bunch of skills that were extremely valuable, and then eventually they recognized some kind of opportunity, they went out, they started their own business. And they didn't quit their job right away. What they did is they started their business on the side, they grew it, and businesses take a long time to grow, and most of them end up failing. So if the business failed, they kept their job, and then they tried to start a different business, and if it succeeded, they would see if they can grow it. You you know, see if they could get it to maybe a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month. Once they get it to a certain point, they would quit their job, go full time in the business, and that's how they became successful. This is the most common path that I've seen, and all the people who want to sell you a nineteen hundred and ninety-seven dollar course don't want you to know this. The reason for that is because they want you to be in a scarcity mindset. They want you to be scared, and they want you to think, "Oh my gosh, I have to buy this course right now. I should spend my money on this course instead of all the other things that I could potentially spend my money on." They also want you to think that you're a sucker if you start a traditional business, which is probably going to take like three to five years to take off. And they'll probably say that college is a scam and you're a slave if you work a nine to five job and blah, 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 blah. I'm sure you guys have seen the ads. But anyways, I think this whole idea from Daniel Mack is absolutely genius. Um, you should do it in real life yourself. No, obviously be respectful to people. You know, don't bother them. Um, be respectful of their time. But yeah, I think a lot of people are more than happy to share how they found 
someone's success. And you can see that with these videos, most of the people are more than happy to help him out. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And before you go, don't leave. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.